Hello, everyone. Hope uh, you can see my screen. Please let me know if not. Sí, está, está perfecto. Perfecto. Muy bien. Well, just to make sure, because uh, every time you have a live session, it's always risky. But uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, we, since this is a virtual event, it's a bit complicated to, to see the audience, to see the, a little bit of the visual feedback. If I'm, you know, telling you the things you want to hear and, and, and also if you have any questions, uh, you know, I don't know how this, how this can work. So hopefully this will be interesting for you. The objective for today um, is to, to tell you about the tenable approach to uh, an integrated um, risk management in, in uh, OT environments, looking at the entire picture, looking at the combined uh, um, uh, converged IT plus OT. Uh, when we talk about OT, we talk about operational technology, and it's commonly uh, referred to as the as the as the uh, industrial components, uh, where you would think of a robot, you think of a SCADA, of a PLC, you think of a utility where you have uh, uh, telemetry and a lot of uh, uh, in industrial type devices that are outside the scope of normal risk management. When we talk about normal or, or conventional risk management, we talk about IT, which uh, is uh, is the, the in information technology part, and it's different kinds of devices that typically can be scanned, can be identified uh, in in different formats. So let me let me go through the through the um, through a few slides, and and hopefully I will be able to convey the, uh, what what I'm talking about uh, with the IT OT converge. So. Uh, in terms of the convergence story, basically, convergence is very old. It's, it's nothing new. Basically, we're coming from uh, the IT world in the top and the OT world in the bottom, where you have, on one side, you had mainframes. On the other side, you had, you had uh, uh, machines directly controlled by, by local devices. As, as time has gone on over the years, it's now become more and more an integrated architecture. And, and even now, when we talk about Industry 4.0, when typically it's a, it's a rethinking of all the industrial environments and, and how to uh, how to um, converge with the new technologies, it's it's always tricky because it's a, uh, we are inheriting a lot of information and, and um, operational devices coming from 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 different generations. And in many cases, they're still present in the in in the factories and in the warehouses and in the production environments. So convergence is 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 on one side purposeful. I mean, it's meant to be. It's meant to be integrated at some point with a, a meaningful design to get an integrated architecture. On the other side, it's also accidental. We find many environments where they expect OT completely separate from IT. And, and accidentally, they become merged. You know, there's no no longer possible to separate networks, to separate resources, and really be sure that it's 100% uh, separate. So when we talk about the different layers of, of, uh, of uh, OT devices, we talk about the more basic input, output, PLC, SCADAs, uh, uh, up, up into the, the, the business management platform, which tend to grow into the, o, in, into the IT part. Um, when we do, when we talk about the new environment, when when we have Industry 4.0, it's no longer a very simple, uh, clear separation between one environment and the other. Everything tends to be much more integrated, much more interconnected, and therefore we have many more issues in terms of how to measure the risk inherent to uh, to uh, working in this environment. So when we talk about industry. 4.0, it's, it's uh, an, an evolution, a tr uh, several trends that have become mainstream in the, uh, in the, over the last few decades. And now, basically, it's an integration of all the physical and all the cybersecurity into one single security approach. And uh, I'm going to skip a few of these slides, otherwise I will run out of time. But, uh, but basically, uh, as this uh, infrastructure has evolved, we have also seen uh, a large number of uh, attacks on the OT infrastructures. And here are some examples. Uh, I think uh, history with this started a long time ago with the Stuxnet, which was the first 
really publicized uh, uh, worm inserted into an OT environment, uh, as, as you remember in, in Iran uh, more than 10 years ago. But from there on, it's been a constant um, stream of attacks. And some of what you see here are the most relevant ones, but uh, uh, by far not the only ones. So there's plenty of examples here where you have attacks um, uh, crippling our industrial infrastructure, whether it's a factory, whether it's a water utility or electrical utility, or as in the, was in the case of Iran, it was a, it was a, a, a nuclear uh, a, a nuclear development uh, uh, environment. So, what are the the approaches you need to to tackle in order to to really adapt to this new world? Uh, it's basically a good governance program where. You need, first of all, visibility. You need to be able to identify all the assets. When you look at this from the cybersecurity or CISO uh, point of view, uh, you are asked to, to measure risk in your organization very often across um, organizational boundaries. Moving from IT into OT, it's very difficult to, first of all, have a clear idea, a clear picture of what all the assets you're supposed to be, to be measuring. So first requirement is full visibility on everything that's going on in the IT and OT environment. Second, it's how do you manage security when the attack vectors are changing and are evolving very quickly. Before, it used to be um, um, complete separate environments and you needed to gain physical access to an, an, a factory in order to be able to, to uh, pose a, phys uh, an, uh, a cybersecurity risk to it. Now it's no longer the case. More and more attack vectors has come, are coming from the outside and uh, it's much more difficult to measure. And last, we need to take into account that the control systems have different, completely different nature compared to the traditional IT devices. So if you approach it from a cybersecurity or a CISO point of view, you're likely to fail because those control devices are not meant to be scanned, are not meant to be audited uh, the traditional way you would audit an IT environment. So in terms of, of the concepts we manage uh, in Tenable when dealing with OT environments, basically it's first you need to have visibility across infrastructure and take into account that in any OT environment, what we call OT, operational or industrial or factory environment, a big percentage of the assets will still be traditional IT. And therefore, if you focus only on the pure OT devices, you will miss a lot, a big percentage of the total number of assets. Second factor, which is very relevant, is uh, OT devices tend to be very quiet. When we talk dormant, is they are programmed, they are configured, and then they start to work. And unless something happens that requires a change in configuration, they are not very chatty. They don't speak in the network. They are not, uh, they, they don't make themselves visible most of the time. So how do you identify an asset that's not really chatty and doesn't really talk into the network? You need to find alternative ways to identify that asset and include it in your inventory and then be able to monitor whether it poses any risk to your to your uh, uh, overall posture. And last, uh, which is also an important factor, is that in a big majority of all the OT environments, they don't, uh, they don't have a regular approach to vulnerability scanning and management. So the question is, how do you manage this when you rarely scan those, those, those environments? When you don't even know how many assets you have, what they're doing, how's the network topology, how they talk to each other. So again, it's an important uh, dark or 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 or, or a, a blind spot we have in the OT environments. So first of all, you need visibility. And when I talk about visibility, it's a, and this is a screenshot from one of our tools, it's an ability to identify the assets in your network, identify which assets to uh, talk to which other assets, which connections can be considered normal, which connections can be considered risky, or it can be even identified as an attack in, in real time even. So you need to provide the, 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 the permanent inventory plus the real time view when things like this change. 
and it has to be an easy to show format that uh, the, the, the plan manager can quickly identify uh, and map this visibility uh, screen into their own uh, network map, into their own um, physical infrastructure. Second, you need to identify attack vectors. When you have identified all the assets, you need to identify the connections between them and how you can reach a particular asset from the outside world or from in another internal network. And if you're able to lay and, 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 and display the attack path, you see whether a risky uh, OT equipment, which cannot really be patched because it's up to the uh, OT provider vendor to, to update and, and fix that vulnerability, you need to provide a way to identify that this is a, this is a, a vulnerable spot and you need ways to protect it. Which better way to protect it and to know how this, uh, this asset can be attacked. And then you show the chain of assets that can be reach in succession to reach to your, your vulnerable device. And of course, you need to plug in other assets in the middle that might pose a risk and might be a security, a security um, liability. If you can patch and fix the intermediate steps, even if you cannot fix the internal network in your OT factory, you can still prevent um, uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the potential threats that might reach those vulnerable devices. So again, it's a proactive threat detection. You know how some vulnerable device can be accessed from the outside and you can uh, protect it preventively. You can patch, you can update uh, those devices that are accessible and are, are um, updatable. More, uh, more tools uh, needed in this place. It's, uh, um, the, the, the problem typically with OT infrastructure is that it's, you know, factories, you don't, update them every every year typically once they are built and the equipment is installed it goes on for a very very long time and typically what we talk to security managers they've recently inherited uh, those plans in terms of managing the risk uh, but means that there's a, a huge blind spot they don't know what they've inherited they don't know the changes over the years from the original specification to what's now and typically, there's very little documentation about configuration, about deployments, about product uh, versions, uh, software versions, and so on. It's really difficult to track something that you cannot really put a, a, a measurement on it. So what we do, our, our approach from Tenable on this, on this uh, OT, IT convergence is combine um, a, a, a mix of passive and active tools to first of all, identify all the assets that communicate, then discover assets which might be very quiet. As I mentioned before, a lot of assets do not actively talk to others on the network. Then identify them 100% for sure, really up to, up to, their, up to their, um, their key uh, factors and, and identify which assets are important. And then... Um, Collect all the information on the internal configuration, software versions, uh, changes in, in, um, in, in configuration, and so on. Um, when we talk about an asset inventory, of course, you need to be able to identify all the devices, even those that are not chatting uh, actively. There we have an active query where we um, simulate the, the, the uh, OT equipment and, um, and, 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 and act with it as if it was, la, um, uh, as if it was a, a, a controller of that same technology, okay? Um, and then um, the, the, uh, with, with other steps in the way, we can also identify changes. We can identify the exposure, the actual exposure we have. So when we combine passive network detection, it means we can we can detect uh, anomalies. We can detect traffic that's changing from the baseline. And um, we can also detect um, uh, uh, um, changes in the configuration of equipment uh, um, that are not able to be, uh, that are not planned. So, you know, outside the normal maintenance window, for example, a change in configuration of a PLC should, uh, should uh, be identified as an anomaly. And that's done with passive network detection. We are um, 
we, we are monitoring continuously um, um, the, the traffic events in the network and then detect when something is out of the norm, the ordinary. And, and these kind of events allow us to map even to the backplane of an OT equipment and identify which devices um, are, are actually uh, part of the anomaly. We can track events, the type of, uh, of, uh, of many types of, of alerts that can be identified. We can, we can uh, detect over, over normal uh, traffic patterns um, with lots of alerts that can be integrated into other security tools. Okay, so um, once we have these uh, actions identified, we need to be able to track and, and identify the vulnerabilities. And, and we have um, um, more than 20,000 vulnerabilities in the last few years. Uh, this slide is a bit old, but uh, the last number we have for 2021 is 22,000 assets, sorry, vulnerabilities identified over the year. 2022, we've already exceeded that, so it's gonna be a record as well. So it's really difficult when we have so many hundreds of vulnerabilities being discovered every week to know exactly which of those, which of those are really important to me or, or, or important in my environment, which of them really pose a risk. So it's important not just to inventory the assets, but also being able to identify uh, out of all the risks and vulnerabilities I have identified, which of them are really relevant to me. And this is something we need to talk in more detail. So first you start with a good asset inventory, then you identify which of those assets are really uh, are really vulnerable to the to the many thousands of vulnerabilities that are are being discovered. Not all of them have an exploit. That's an important uh, factor, and others require certain types of attacks that may may really not be feasible. So it's it's useless to dedicate resource to fix something that's not really applicable in our environment. It's something we need to prioritize to make sure we don't uh, dedicate time to the wrong kind of vulnerabilities. So once you are tracking all the vulnerabilities in all your uh, in all your devices, and here I'm talking both IT and OT devices, then you are identifying each of the vulnerabilities and you are associating our own uh, tenable branded uh, priority rating. It allows the security manager to really be able to prioritize. Okay, for example, I have this vulnerability here. I'm giving it a risk of 9.8 out of 10. However, if I was looking only at the at the more market standard CVSS, it would be a much lower scoring, 5.9. So if I'm using a more elaborate, more advanced prioritization tool, I'm going to be using this score to let me know that I need to prioritize a fix of this vulnerability. Because this is actually more actionable, more exploitable than other vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities I may have in my environment. So this is part of the actions that uh, that need to happen when I do the asset inventory and then I do the vulnerability tracking in each of those assets. And then the last part is I need to know what's going on in real time, know what's happening when somebody wants to change the configuration. Is this a, a planned configuration change or is someone trying to, to, to manipulate a PLC inside my network? I need to know if this is malware, if it's a... It's a, it's a it's a, 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 a benign change in my configuration because it could be unintended. It could be something done by one of my, my um, operations um, administrators, but maybe the wrong kind of action. And I need to detect it. And this is also a way to track the, the, the wrong kind of changes in my network. So configuration control in OT devices, it's also important knowing taking snapshots, taking pictures of what's happening and, um, and, and being able to update it uh, 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 and, and, and uh, warning the uh, operations managers that uh, something has changed over your previous configuration. So configuration control is also something that needs to be managed in order to know, you know what's happening in my OT environment. And then, of course, uh, uh, another aspect in our in our environment is that um, 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 we are never alone in a, in a, in a, um, 
in a in a factory environment there's typically more systems in place so we are talking about integrating with different uh, layers of corporate communication and uh, system administration so in order to attack the converge surface it would be it ot as a combined uh, as a combined uh, effort and you need to attack dif these different layers with different kinds of tools so uh, you need to integrate with other elements like for example in this case a palo alto firewall or an aruba wireless uh, wireless manager now this is just one example of how you might want to integrate your existing network infrastructure, security infrastructure with um, an ITOT vulnerability management platform. So integrating quickly, natively, um, uh, supported by both uh, manufacturers, being able to add native integration with many other tools, like, for example, um, a CM or a CMDB tool, being able to combine both the IT and the OT uh, overviews into a, a single dashboards, single elements to 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 provide a, a, a repository of all the risk information across the, the converged infrastructure. It, there's not many tools in the market that can provide this um, really advanced and complete look on, on IT and OT. And um, integration with other tools, uh, integration with uh, other vendors, like uh, what I was saying, a CM or a SOAR, next generation firewalls, diode firewalls, etc. This can be part of the environment in any in any given environment and needs to be needs to be um, um, considered. And um, as, a, as a closing message, uh, what we would recommend as a vendor as Tenable is uh, in order to close the cyber exposure gap, uh, you need full visibility both on the IT and on the OT. On all types of devices, typically they are on-premise, but now also moving to cloud, moving to virtualized environments, moving to, to, to mobile devices and so on. All of this is converged attack. We can, get, we can be attacked through a vulnerability in any of these devices. So it's important to have a complete view of everything. And that would be the end of my, um, of my uh, presentation. Um, I tried to stick to the time Hope uh, this was uh, relevant to you in terms of the of the content. Um, looking at now at the screen again, if you have any questions, we only we have a few minutes. If you have any questions, otherwise I will uh, I will stop here. Okay, then uh, thanks a lot for your time. I hope it was uh, instructive, and um, I will leave you with the rest of your uh, of your um, uh, event. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, I think you can be, I can be contacted through the organization and uh, really pleased to talk to you in more detail about your specific interests. Thanks a lot. Good evening. Bye-bye.